Oh, there's a terrible silence at the Flash Bourne School of Soul Fighting. A flap of wings and Hiccup jumped, but he was only toothless. Coming to sit on Hiccup's helmet, looking very pleased with himself and eating what looked like an enormous mouthful of wild boar. Where have you been? asked Hiccup, a little irritated. I asked you to get help, not get yourself some breakfast. <laughs> you were in real trouble down there. Toothless started guiltily. Oh yes, Toothless looking. Toothless l l l looked everywhere. Why is your mouth full? asked Hiccup sternly. Uh, just eating, um, explained Toothless, batting his eyelids innocently. Uh, just ch chewing the air. Well, that air smells like wild boar, said Hiccup. <laughs> Surely the dragon this cute could never tell a lie. Hello, shouted Thuggery the Meathead. Is there anybody here? Go out and declare yourselves. Answer came there none. Where are you? called the Neverbird. The young warriors looked at one another. Perhaps they weren't safe after all. Nobody said it, but what they were thinking was, maybe there are some of those rogue dragons over here, even here in this very castle. They drew their swords and began to wander cautiously through the deserted building. But everywhere they went, all they met was silence, apart from the howling of the wind and the cry of the Neverbirds. Where are you? Which was unfortunately rather appropriate for the slightly sinister game of sin hide and seek they were playing, and it didn't help their nerves. It is a spooky experience, tipping to towing through the darkness of an unfamiliar abandoned castle at the dead of night, not knowing whether someone or something might jump out at you any moment. The young warriors were experienced burglars and soldiers, of course, so they crept through the castle like seasoned commandos. Two of them stood on either side of a door, and then they all burst through, axes and swords at the ready, and checked under tables and behind doors beneath tapestries. Nothing. Where are you? called the Neverbirds. Hiccup's back was tense, nerves as tight as catgut, expecting any moment dragons. Uh, claws upon his back, dragon fires, fire upon his neck. There were great training rooms with swords and spears um, stacked in racks on the side, huge empty towers and an enormous central fighting area with torches flaming all around it. Someone must have lit those torches, but where were all the people? Finally, having wandered for half an hour through echoing halls and the warrior of empty corridors, Hiccups and very vicious as warriors to be all met somewhere in the middle outside a great glowing windowed banqueting hall. Just as Hiccups nerves could barely stand it, there was a whir of wings overhead. Somebody cried out, Dragons! And a number of tense young warriors to be let fly their north bows, north bows without thinking. Boyden's whiskers! Don't fire! You imbeciles! You nearly took my head off there! yelled a furious voice from above. Oh, it was choked of us, thank goodness. Aboard his great dragon bullheart, over the castle doors! The adult warriors, who had taken the easy way up Angry Mountain, were arriving. As they staggered through the castle doors, it was clear that the easy way had not been all that easy, what with one thing and another. The adults had been attacked by rogue dragons too, scorched faces, rigan dragons that limped with oh, scarred whims and, and red ripped ears, someone rather inexplicably carrying a blackened, burnt piece of mast still with a, with a ship's mast, still with the flag flying bravely from the end. On shell shock serious, this was the state in which the adult warriors arrived. The tired chieftain's expressions were unusually grim as they landed their riding dragons on the battle arena. Wordlessly, they took in the state of their young warriors to be ash-streaked and bleeding, raked with talons and blasted by fire, their clothes flapping in rags about them. Still coughing from the smoke, all unmistakable signs of a full-scale dragon attack. The warriors-to-be were tough young adolescents, but even though they were trying to carry their broken weapons with their usual swagger, their eyes betrayed them. You could see the fear in those eyes from their extraordinarily close brush with death. They were scared. Dragons had never behaved this way before. An attack of this nature with six different species, with, with well, no, not six, sorry, with too many different species, uh, joining together was unheard of in the archipelago, and they were terrified it was going to happen again. Are you all alive? growled Bertha, queen of the queen of creature for the fog burgers and Kavakazi's mother, a great thunder thighed mountain of a woman, whose singed plaits were still smoking slightly. Kavakazi stepped forward and gave the salute. All alive! 
She said, thanks to Hiccup Friends, is Alec the Third? But the castle is deserted. That really rattled the chieftains. Biceps of Thor, bellowed Margaret on the meter. Don't tell me Fishplashin has been defeated. Impossible. The finest warrior uh, hero the Echimelago has ever known. And his 40 warriors and the Red Tigers, they're undefeatable. How can this be? Together they pushed by the gigantic door of the banqueting hall as tall as the house. Creak! Nobody there again. There was a big golden cauldron sitting on the remains of an extinguished fire, but the ashes were still smouldering. The long table was set for a great triumphal banquet, the banquet of the new warriors, and a joyous feast it should have been indeed, with the torches lit and a thousand Vikings toasting the new generation. The tribes of the archipelago trooped into the ban ban banqueting hall in funeral procession and surveyed what ought to have been the triumphal feast. The food was set on the long table with a great wild boar sitting in the middle with a few little gummy bites taken out of it. That was ridiculous. But that... Um, Nova, the Novrains found a chicken leg and gnawed on it enthusiastically. Mmm, tasty and still warm, he grunted. Still warm? That meant the inhabitants of the castle had been there very recently. But where were they now? Where are you? The distant song of the nigger birds floated hauntingly through, floated hauntingly through the window. It was a mystery. And then suddenly, The noise came out of nowhere, an imperious ringing knock like the great god Thor knocking on a metal door with the tip of his axe. Sounding out in a deserted castle on a cliff top with the wind handling around them and the inhabitants of that castle having mysteriously disappeared. The effect on the exhausted Vikings who had spent the night fighting rogue dragons, well, the effect on those Vikings was pretty devastating, I'd say. Knock, 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 knock. What was that? whispered Grabbit the Grim, his, his two black and blue eyes boggling his grip tightening on his still smouldering axe. What was that? There it is again, exclaimed Sir Kinnick. Astonishment, it was a loud echoing noise as if someone was knocking on a metal door and expecting an answer. Knock, knock, knock. Where are you? Oh, where can it possibly be coming from, Wonderstone? Uh-oh, thought Hiccup. Maybe it's fish legs his knees knocking together. Maybe it's fish legs his knees knocking together. Suggested it's not that, but he said it with less than his usual swagger in his sneer, because there was something deeply unsettling and spooky about such a knocking in such a setting. Knock, knock, knock. Well, shiver my goggles and blister my bunions. It seems to be coming from the cauldron, exclaimed Stoic. Knock, knock, knock. It was indeed coming from the big golden chloride cauldron. Something or someone was inside that cauldron, and that something or someone was knocking on the inside with a clear, loud knock. Oh dear. Investigate the cauldron, no brains, said Stoic. Um, I've got a little cramp in my leg, actually, Chief, said Nobber. Old war injury. It comes on occasionally. The Vikings had been brought up on stories by the far side of skeletons being brought back to life in a cooking pot, so they could hardly be blamed for their daring. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The chiefs looked one another. They stepped forward to the cauldron. The golden cauldron was surrounded by 18 um, muscle chieftains with their weapons drawn, not to mention most of the warriors in the archipelago. Grabbit the Grim threw back his shoulders and knocked on the lid himself. Three bright bossy knocks. He cleared his throat importantly. Come out, whoever you are, he ordered. This is Chief Grabbit the Grim speaking. Come out with your hands above your head, for you are surrounded. The cauldron was a black pretty silent. This time, stoic knocked. If you don't come out on the count of three, he ordered his most important I must be obeyed voice. We will be forced to lift the lid ourselves, and I warn you, we are very heavily armed. Silence from the cauldron. Well, those 18 hairy chieftains would rather have been blown by storms into the back of next week before they lost face in front of one another. They were afeared. Oh, yes, they were. They were afeared right down to their unkempt toenails. But they were going to lift that lid anyway, even if there were 100 ghosts inside, having degenerate ghost parties with their ancestors. Morgan, are murderous, said Stoic. Help me lift the lid. Oh, don't lift the lid. Please don't lift the lid. <laughs> Poor Hiccup. The fish legs was practically crying. He was so frightened. Hiccup had to, had to agree with him. It seemed a good idea to keep the cauldron shut. Don't open the cauldron. They keep on doing this. It keeps on saying, don't open the door. Don't open the cauldron. Oh, my goodness, they're going to do it. The lid was so heavy, it took all three Vikings to... To eave it off the cauldron, it clanged to the desk with a great ringing clamour. 
to the deck and the three Vikings bellowed as if they were mountain biking as something flew out of the chalk cauldron. A chicken! yelled Bergamum in relief. It's only a chicken! Only a chicken! Ha ha ha! boomed the life Vikings, hugely embarrassed and relieved. Ha ha ha! When? Hang on a second. Swedish lace in alarm. There's something else in there. And there it was, clawing out of the cauldron and grasping hold of the rim from the inside with a ghastly, groping grasp. A human hand with fingertips tipped with iron. Ah! Chapter five is called Something Nasty in the Cauldron. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I'll have to have that tomorrow. See you then.